Okay, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later uh, for our first deck of the day, which is going to be Selesnia Angels. Y'all know how much I like uh, these Angels decks, and I and I do like Selesnia decks, so I put them together, and this is uh, you know a deck just for me. So as you can tell here, we're almost just mono white. We're barely barely have any green. Basically, all we have green for in, in the main deck is Vivian Reed. Um, and then the sideboard, we get some good tools uh, like Carnage Tyrant against Control, Crowl Harpooner against Mono Blue, um, Night of Autumn against uh, aggro decks and different enchantment decks and everything. Um, but yeah, we're almost a mono white deck. Uh, so as you can see here, so since we're just so uh, close to being mono white, it's really hard to fit Land War Elves in. I would like to play Land War Elves instead of Flower, but you just can't. We just can't really because. We only have eight um, untapped green sources, and it's pretty tough uh, to have Lanwar Elf on turn one, and you don't really want to be playing Lanwar Elf on turn two, three, and four, and stuff like that. It's hard to have like Lanwar Elf and uh, enough white sources for like Resplendent Angel and History Banalia on turn three. So what these flowers are doing here is they're just kind of fixing our mana. They're like extra lands where we don't need to play extra lands. Like so, we have. Yeah, like this would be a deck that would probably want to be playing like 26 lands um, because we really want to hit six land drops because we want to get to our sixth land for Shalai activation or Splendid Angel activation and so on. So I wanted to play 26 lands to help get us to six land drops. But basically, I'm only playing 23 and playing the three flowers that kind of help our uh, color situation. If we need that second white for Splendid Angel or History, we can go get it. If we have enough white mana and we want to get, go get another green source for Vivian, we can go ahead and go get it. Um, so that's what we got going on here. Um, the matchups I don't want to face are like Turbo Fog and even like Esper Control. I don't really want to face Control uh, too much, um, but especially Turbo Fog. Uh, like the, the blue-green Nexus deck, that, that deck would be pretty difficult to beat. Right, here we go. So Lesnia Angels. <clears throat> uh, so why not Benelish Marshall? I don't think we need any more three drops. I think our three drop slot is already uh, pretty well taken care of with History of Benalia and Resplendent Angel. And I like both of those cards more than uh, Benelish Marshall. Um, there's nothing really in the deck. Like, even, like, just saying that, like, if Benelish Marshall cost one white white, for example, I don't know if I'd put it in over really about anything else that we have in the deck, honestly. Really hope this is not Simic Nexus. Hmm. All right, blue black control. Well, we didn't get there. All right, we're slowly getting there. Okay, three down Resplendent Angel. Look, so History of Benali is a better card than Resplendent Angel here. Um, but how we saw um, how we saw Essence Scatter last turn and nothing else, they weren't playing anything else. I was just kind of thinking that they were just going to be... Um, they were just going to have Counter Magic. Uh, which is why I went with the... Angel instead of the history. Spell Pierce is pretty dirty. Hmm. 
classic case of one person spending mana and the other person not being able to. Alright, we got six cards in hand still. Please don't have another removal spell opponent. Okay, good. If we get this extra land, Lyra can take over. We'll see if we get that or not. All right. And Lear should be able to win from here. This is the first time I think I've ever seen um, an Aether Tunnel played at all. Because I didn't play M19 Limited, so I don't think I've ever seen that card before. Oh yeah, let's update this sub count as zero out of five. Try refreshing on on my end it doesn't look like I've gotten any new subs today. Try refreshing your stream, RJ. Uh you may get a, a sub alert to be able to send. Look at like the top of the chat. So, yeah, that that was the the problem of waiting on um, the Angel of Grace was uh, certainly our opponent's ability to just draw a uh, counter spell. It's all good. Hmm. Got that on our guard in right in time. Good job, Hawkeye. We played Toe Catly. Isn't that your favorite card, Hawkeye? Next turn, I'll play a Johnny. Maybe a Johnny's your favorite card. I'm not sure if our opponent knows what happened. Alright, Hawkeye walked away. We don't need to play a Johnny. You gonna go play with the battery? Let's just push it off the table. No. It's playing with the battery now. <laughs> you just pushed it under the couch. Now what are you gonna do? Okay. Oh, good boy. Um, I don't know if we need to do any sideboarding. Uh, Ixalan's Binding, I guess, is probably pretty good. I'm just going to keep it the same. Yeah, I'm sorry, RJ. I don't, I don't know... What was going on there? I don't know why it didn't. That never came up. But. But thank you very much for subscribing, RJ. 
Um, oh, maybe are the are the notifications not coming in? Because actually, here we go. It's showing up over here for me now. Okay, no, there's just something wrong with my OBS setting, I guess. Because we have... Oh, there's Super Slapjack. Okay. Super Slapjack's worked. We should have two subs on the day. So Super Slapjack and RJ. Why is RJ's not working? Oh, there it goes. Good job, Hawkeye. Okay, I might have hit the button to do that a little too much. Chapstick. Rawr. Attack the chapstick over here. Well, that was a pretty easy win. Start the day off. All right, face in mono red. Hey, free Yuri's getting a, a gifted sub from Crazy Pyro. <laughs> this is a test of the emergency sub notification system. This is only a test. Please ignore this test of the emergency sub notification system. <laughs> Thanks, Crazy Pyro. All right, so it looks like it's working now. Sub number three on the day. Whew, no lands? I just, I just realized that our opponent do not have lands. We got a lot of them chilling over here. Alright, honor guard down. I guess I'm just gonna binding this lava runner. Got nothing really else to do here. Might as well just like save the life. Um, you know, they could certainly draw another lava runner, I suppose. So they just had to exile another light up and a firebrand. Hmm. I guess Angel the Grace attack technically attacks for more. Next turn. Like, we get attacked for six lifelink with Angel of Grace. Only attacking for five lifelink with Lyra. Oh, yeah. This is certainly game now. So even if our opponent can deal with one Lyra, we have a backup. Where can you find the Grixis Legends deck? It's in it's in here in the stream decker. Um, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> may may do like control F. Which I'm gonna help you out. May do control F, search for Grixis Legends. Alright, Knight of Autumns can come on in. Um I don't think I normally want Ixalon's binding. I guess a, a Danto Vanguard is just a really bad card that I don't want at all. Um, 
So I gotta play one more card. Do I wanna play a binding or a settle? I could just play a, a harpooner. This is a, a two mana card that can just trade with like their creatures. Kinda like that. I don't really love a Johnny here either. Let's t take out one a Johnny and put in another Harpooner. All right, I think I found the Grix Legends. Here we go, found it. No, no baffling ends here. Baffling end would certainly be um, a nice card to have access to. Yeah, see, Harpooner just kind of fits our curve here. See, a lot better than a Danta Vanguard would be. Um, right now, I actually like this Angel variant, honestly. Yeah, I've been liking this one right now. But, um, I think, uh, Esper has a lot of opportunity. I think it kind of needs some, some tuning. Um, But I like the the blue and the black cards to go along. Um, I like the blue black cards to go along with uh, all these white angels. All right, green hat man. Have a good afternoon. I'll see you see you back in, see you back later. All right, I'll just play harpooner over resplendent angel. So I think Resplendent Angel is a card I'm going to want to like follow up with after Shalai and Angel of Grace and everything like that. Take the two for one. That's fine with me. <laughs> no opponent down. Uh, collision. That's good at killing angels. Land Banefire. Huh. Draw us drawing a land is awesome. That means we get to Angel of Grace. Um, because our assuredly our opponent's just gonna cast this Banefire here, right? Like so it doesn't just go away. Um so I like not having anything on the battlefield for them to banefire. Yeah, there is that like mono red splash, splash green um, that has uh, that has collision and cinder vines. Maybe that's what our opponent's playing, or maybe they just have collision just as like a, a two mana card to deal with angels. That's honestly not the worst either. All right, well they didn't even play their bane fire. They could at least just like cast bane fire for two, at the very least. Like that bane fire is just gonna go away.
Saving this very important resplendent angel. I understand you are in need of support. Strength is born of struggle. Go, Angel of Grace, go. We are looking good. Hey, Loaf Beef. Welcome to the stream, Loaf Beef. Not Beef Loaf. Loaf Beef. Thank you so much for that support there. Getting both of these out of You're range. Of more than um, I like seeing. I like getting my creatures, you know, to four toughness. So just uh, the lightning strikes and things like that don't kill any of the creatures. All right, frenzies at start. Are they trying to... No, they're just casting a spell. Alright, and got me down to seven. But with one mana left, should be it. And then our angels should be able to just finish this game up here. Alright, so it looks like we're going to be uh, two... Yep, two and oh. You saw the, the cranberries in concert? They could have been fired for two without using any of the treasures that you you know, like they use the treasures later on and stuff for like sacrificing and so on. But yeah, so they could have been fired for two. Um you know, would not have killed me, would have had me at five, but yeah. Pretty good opening hand. Um, may need a shock in with this Temple Garden later, but I, I like just getting the basic here. Because um, I don't really necessarily need to draw more basics. Like, we will, you know. But I think we can just take the, take the land out. So our opponent had us at two optimally. We haven't done a whole lot. Here we just kind of beat a mono red player, and now we're three and zero. Oh, okay. You didn't you didn't see the cranberries? You just watched a lot of their live performances on YouTube. All right, take a look at this Angels Control deck. Baiting to cut find for more angels. Cut find. Um I 
I don't see find like find find out. I don't see find in the deck list. I think I mean your your two mana slot is just incredibly weak with this deck. You have just an unbelievable amount of four and five mana cards and you only have twenty four lands. That's just not not very doable. You need more lands and more two drops and a lot less four and five mana cards. Honest Climb. That's a really good card here. That's a really good card. Hmm. We're going to have to be really aggressive trying to win this game quickly. That Hada that Hadonis Climb gives our opponent like a, a just a great late game. So I'm going to be playing a Johnny ticking up on both these Tithe Takers and uh, swinging in for six. The good news about um, the good news about the Hadonis Climb putting a counter on Growth Chamber Guardian is that this Growth Chamber Guardian cannot adapt because now it has a counter on it, so it doesn't get to adapt. Um, and uh, so we we don't have to worry about the Ajani taking taking lethal i guess that's what i'm saying so they can't like adapt it they can still put one counter on the growth chamber guardian make it a 4-4 here um but they're not going to be attacking a johnny for five this turn um which angels deck do you think is the best for best of one and best of three um I hope you find your path. Mardu Angels has a lot of potential for best of one. I think you think you kind of need it to tune it a little bit um, with maybe having like Deafening Clarion in the main deck, maybe. But honestly, may honestly, besides that, this could be just the way you want to be going uh, as far as best of one is concerned. So that just kind of has like a consistent strong. curve. When you're playing best of one, curving out is really, really important. That's just that's just like what best of one is kind of built around. How they give you like the better of the two hands. You're just going to curve out um, a lot more often because of that. And so uh, this deck does have a a really good uh, curve. Um, you maybe even want to just like take out Ixalan's bindings, like those two cards, and just you know, not even need like that little bit of interaction and just kind of focus on the curve more. Best of three, I'm still not sure. I was talking about like I think I think Esper has a lot of good tools, the Esper Angels deck, but I think my I think my list is quite a ways off. I think I need to tune the list up. Um but I've been happy with this one. This is only the second time that I've played this one. We I think we went 5-0 last time. We've won all of our matches so far, even though we haven't really done very much um, here. Alright, they're not flipping the climb. Alright, they didn't go search with Growth Chamber Guardians. So that means they have all four in their hand. So another one of these cards... So you know, we know this card's a Growth Chamber Guardian, another one's going to be a Growth Chamber Guardian as well. Alright. Um, let's 
get Settle in here and Binding. We did see Conclave Tribunal from them, but I don't think I want Knight of Autumn. The pro Hadana's Climb is just a really difficult card for us to beat. Because um, normally they're just going to be playing Climb later on in the game and then flipping it immediately. It's not normally going to be like what happened that last game. Oh, we could have Spyglass for the Winged Temple of Araska. That is That is something we could have. That is an option. No, I think I'd rather have Settle. With them having Conclave Tribunal. Yeah, I think I'd rather just have Settle. So I think I like um, kind of what we're looking at here. Need to trim some stuff down. I'm going to take out maybe two Ajani since we're on the draw and, you know, we'll likely be a little behind. Um. And kind of the same thing with like vanguards. Maybe we'll just take out all the vanguards. And put in a Vivian and a Knight of Autumn or a Tyrant or put one of these Ajani's back in. I don't need this Vivian. We'll take that out. I guess I'll play like two vanguards. Nah, one Vanguard, two Ajani. So, there's just so many fours and fives. I kind of wish... Hey, Vitravius. I kind of wish uh, that we had Conclave Tribunal instead of Binding. Um, I expect them to have, like, Jade Light Ranger. Um... No, so they were Bant, you know, they could have like Deputy Detention, Merfolk Branchwalker. Um It's also it is it is certainly possible that they do not have ETB effects for Honor Guard. Um Krasis doesn't Honor Guard doesn't do anything against Krasis. Yeah. So it is certainly possible that Honor Guard is dead, but I want to keep it in here for another game. <laughs> Honor Guard looks rad. Don't mind keeping it. It's true. Certainly could have like Frilled Mystic. You never know. They could have their own Knight of Autumns over there. isn't necessarily going great for us. Didn't want to draw more fours and fives. It's we do have a whole lot of fours and fives here. Hopefully we get some some lands. Sure to cut some mythics from this. Uh, for budget regions, what would you cut and replace them with? I mean, I guess it it, it kind of depends on which mythics you have um, and which ones you don't. Uh, I think Angel of Grace is probably the worst mythic in the deck. Like that's the, that's the easiest card to not have to not to not play. Well, it's been going so well for us.
Nope, no lands. <laughs> yeah, cut some mythics and put some lands in. Good news is if we do draw lands, I mean, we have a, a whole lot of cards to, like, they're just a couple. Alright, don't have to worry about counter magic. Um, I'm kind of binding this growth chamber guardian so they can't just play more. I think that could be. Uh, pretty beneficial to us. Ooh. Do we go down to two to Vivian and kill this Lyra? Or do I just play the land in tapped and hold up settle? Guess either way, we're we're dying to this Lyra if they have a Lyra. Or sorry, sorry, we're dying to the Lyra if they have interaction. That's what I meant to say. Wild and feel the wrath of Scala. Our Angel of Grace in our graveyard can ship us back up to ten. Um, and obviously the Life Link from Angel of Grace and Lyra can do that too. What you got about it? Come to me. I guess I'm going to try settling. Because settling does, like, you know, keep the Vivian on the battlefield. I could also just, you know, depending on how my opponent attacks, I could just either exile this Angel of Grace to reset my life total or play this Angel of Grace. Either way, uh, keep us from you know, going to less than one if they just attack us with everything and if they ignore Vivian. Right. 
Right. Takali stops the Angel of Gracie to be trigger. Right, right, right. That's a good point. So we still have Vivian in play. So we can Vivian minus next turn, destroy the the tribunal, get back binding, binding a new growth chamber guardian, and still play like a Lyra. Oh. It is good to see you, my well, that's friend. That's kind of good for us. Hey, Panavia. What I see in you. Welcome back. Resubbing for the third month. Welcome back, Panavia. That's that's good for us. They didn't just. I mean, that's like on the on the <laughs> get battlefield. They get, get to just do that. They didn't just pull, replay like one of these growth, ch growth chamber guardians. All right, so I can double spell with Resplendent and History, or I can just play Lyra. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just go Lyra. And I'm, I know... So, attacking with Honor Guard here puts the uh, Johnny to four, so when it ticks up, then Lyra kills it. But I think it's safer, since we're at two life, I think it's safer that just in case they... Because if I do that, and then they draw, like you know, a Vivian or a Crushing Canopy or some kind of removal spell for the Lyra, then we die. And so I think it's just safer just to hold them both back so we don't just die to a removal spell. All right, so that was sub number five on the day. So we'll be cracking a pack open victory. after this. I'm becoming irritated. Well, so I wanted to play Lyra. Um, yeah, no, we, we could have played Angel of Grace, then we'd be able to attack for six with Lyra buff, but then we don't get the extra Angel. I wanted to play um, Lyra first because I wanted to be able to play Resplendent Angel after that. Um, and because Res Resplendent Angel gets us like that extra Angel. So they do get to activate a Johnny another time, but I, I think it's worth it to get like our extra angel over here and everything. And we're looking pretty good. I will lend you my strength. <laughs> uh, no plans to right now, Flaming Cheetos. Um, yeah, just a regular streamer. Um, it's each end step for Resplendent Angel's trigger. So, if you gained life during your opponent's turn with something, uh, you will get the angel at, at, uh, at that end step also. Like, for example, if I, if I have like this 5-5 five five angel token block, I would have been able to, to uh, uh, get a new one. I'll just jump them both. I 
I was not strong enough. Um. How this thing goes is no one knows the wilds like I do. We are, of course, getting another angel also to be a blocker. We're getting another 5-5 five, five lifelinker. So we got three blockers there to, to protect Vivian. Biogenic use. That card's pretty cool. See, Takali Underguard did something, finally. There was a card in their deck that Takali Underguard did something against. I knew it was in there somewhere. Why didn't they. They could have just. Why didn't they make more oozes? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's a very quick, very quick 4-0. Um, we are at the final boss with an extra life. But first, it is pack time. We're going to go ahead and crack open a Rivals Vixalon pack. And crack open the my fourth copy of Storm the Vaults. So I only have three right now. So let's get the fourth copy of Storm the Vaults here real quick. There we go, Storm the Vault. Fourth copy. So whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. So you have to have like a creature deal combat damage to a player, then you make a treasure. And then at the beginning of your end step, if you control five or more artifacts, transform it. So what are... I haven't decided how I'm going to make this Storm the Vault deck yet. Um, don't know how I'm going to make that Storm the Vault deck yet. But I kind of want to. Alright, final boss time. No, I didn't know that was going to be a Storm of the Vault. I, Storm of the Vault's one of the last cards that I need. It may be the very last. I'm not sure if it's actually the last. There, I'm not sure if there's other cards I need still in Rivals, but it's it's close. All right, keeping a risky one. If I was on the play, I would not have kept this. Keeping it on the draw with like the two lander. Ooh, we are facing some gates. <laughs> yep, pre-recorded. There's Hawkeye in the background. Uh, really want one more land, really want to play a Johnny next turn. Well, obviously I want two lands. I really want to go with Johnny into Vivian. Gates decks don't usually deal with Planeswalkers too well. Ram? That thing's big. Hmm. Alright, that's a problem. I think that's Trample, too. Should I play Shalai? Do not fear, my friend. See in yourself what I see in you. Um, yeah, Takali is only good against the White Angel. I will be sideboarding out Takali. This is game one.
land. Dilt. Deliver us to victory. Gates of Blaze is just gonna kinda of kill me anyway. So if my opponent attacked, I could have traded with my two knights. It was it would have been a bad attack for the opponent. I was hoping that they were gonna attack. Um because I would have been able to triple block with my creatures and kill their ram and pay for life to keep a Danto Vanguard alive, so they would have just traded their gate gatebreaker ram for my two knights. There is a lot of black mana in our opponent's mana base, isn't there? That's a good point. I didn't notice that at first, that Demir Gilgate, Golgari Gilgate. I wouldn't think Lich's Mastery would be the card that would be in their deck. I don't know exactly what is, though. Right, I'll put the mic here. I want... I don't want to block the kitty there, but, like... Like, right here is, like, where I'm comfortable... Like, the most comfortable spot for the mic. So that's annoying. There we go, that'll work. What's our opponent doing over here? Strength is born of struggle. Hoping they didn't draw Gates of Blaze this turn. It's like the card they need. Alright, that's not Gates of Blaze. That's still not Gates of Blaze. So the big question is if I trade Lyra with the Ram. You think this is Lich? I could just let a Johnny die. Or I can trade these. The, the thing has trample. I have summoned reinforcements. Yeah, and the ram has vigilance. See, so 
yeah, do I... Maybe I should honor guard to keep them from gaining a lot of life from, like, that... That, uh, the white angel. They're not gonna really be able to play Lich's Mastery plus that angel. I mean, I, I could just have, like, Angel of Grace end step. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, if I just didn't, I guess you're right. If I if I just didn't block, I, I had lethal. Yeah, I guess I did. If I just let my Lyra keep my Lyra alive, but that's okay. So yeah, I did have Lyra, or sorry, I did have lethal last turn. Um, I did have lethal last turn, but. Correct. Yeah, no, I, I, if I did not block, I would have been fine. I'm going to have Angel of Grace available in case of a Sweeper. Because a Sweeper, I can keep, keep a Dante Vanguard alive and play Angel of Grace. Remember, we don't really have to be worried about mass manipulation stealing a bunch of things because of Shalai. They can only take just Shalai with mass manipulation. Yeah, I could have won the game. So yeah, I guess I could have won the game earlier by not blocking. Um, but I should still be good to go here with this this turn. I guess they could have fogs though now. Alright, so now this is only going to put them down to one. Draw the land for Flourish. No, did not draw the land for Flourish. Um... We ult Vivian, we can't lose. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to lose from here anyway. But we'll see, I suppose. Oh! I didn't keep... Uh, I didn't keep a Danta Vanguard alive. Okay, now that's that's a punt there. That's a punt, not keeping a Danta Vanguard alive. I just kind of clicked okay. It's going to be difficult to win now. I think we're going to lose this now. Uh, obviously, we draw the land a little too late. Yep. All right, well, I threw that one away. All right, let's get binding in here. Another Vivian. I want all these Knight of Autumns. Do not want these Honor Guards. And what else? Um, this is 62. No, I, I was out of the game. That wasn't like a, a shame concede. I couldn't I couldn't win anymore with our opponent having seven cards and me not having a relevant card. I can Ixalan's Binding of Colossus. I can kill it with Knight of Autumn or Vivian Reed. I can attack over it with my Flyers. Um, Tithe Taker is like the card that doesn't do a whole lot for us. No, it's still good enough. I'll keep those in. Maybe Angel of Grace?
Maybe she'll lie. I do one Lyra, one Angel of Grace. Yeah, Shly's good against mass manipulation, but not really good against anything else. It's pretty undersized, um, easy to die, easy to get killed by a sweeper. Okay, let's hit hit our land drops this time. Perfect draw step. Yeah, we didn't see any reason why our opponent's playing black mana yet. Um Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. They just seemed like regular teamer. Um, you should be proud to I will teamer bend gates. You my strength. I just let a Johnny die. Ram's really good against me. This is why I need to get my bindings. I am sorry. I must go. I've seen things that would break someone like you. This is going to be a tough one to win. Basically, just playing my Planeswalkers is like gain life spells right now. Uh, you know, just five mana. You know, draw, draw a Shalai and gain seven. Ha! I've seen worse. Gatebreaker Ram is just messing me up. We have four Ixalan's bindings. The wilds yeah. are my shield. Hmm. We're not losing because we don't have a baffling end in our deck. Hmm. Resplendent Angel is better. Tithe Taker is better against. Tithe Taker is going to be better against um, Gates of Blaze. But if they if they have another Gates of Blaze from here, I don't think I'm really winning anyway. So in this case, I'm just going to cast the Flower also to get the the seventh land, so we can double spell with these two. Um, it also shuffles back that Ixalan's binding that we put to the bottom so that we have all four that are uh, potential draw steps now. Um. Let's do this again. I, I should have brought in Settle. No! I thought I was putting the planes into play. Well. Wanted to play Shalai there. Not Tithe Taker. Oh, 
Well, Shalai would have been better. So we need to draw, like, Angel of Grace here. A little too late for that binding. Of course, they had the trophy, though, to kill the binding. Um, you know, we, did, we didn't know about. So they would have had Assassin's Trophy there. So yeah, I messed that, that first game up really bad. First game was my bad. Alright, we had the loss to give. All right, just got to breathe and restart. Yeah, we had the extra life. No, I still own my Magic Online collection. Double Tithe Taker into a Johnny, taking up on him, is a pretty good curve. Yeah, if we get the lands, we'll see if we do. Watery Grave. Hmm. Alright, first draw was perfect. Can we get one more? Alright, one of Johnny down. Yeah, Honor Guard is just so good against the most popular deck in the format, which is why it's in the main deck. A matchup that's pretty difficult without it. We could have, like, the Honor Guards in the sideboard, but... Um, putting Honor Guards in the sideboard take up a whole lot of sideboard slots. And there's not really, like, four cards in the sideboard that I necessarily would rather have in the main deck. Also just kind of fits the curve um, of, you know, just... I want like the the two drops in the main deck anyway. And I I don't want to use up the sideboard slots on him. So our opponent did not activate the treasure map during their turn. They were probably thinking that they were going to activate the treasure map on my turn, but they cannot do that because of Tithe Taker. That's unfortunate. Look how far you've come. Hmm. I'll play one on our guard, but not the other. This kind of deck could certainly have Hostage Shaker, Chupacabra. Um, they could also have Cry of the Carnarium. This could be a Cry of the Carnarium deck, and if they have Cry of the Carnarium, we'll at least still have a creature in play. Yeah. Honor Guard does some things not just against Sultai, though. Like, it's it's okay against other matchups. It, it was really good against uh, Mono Red earlier. Playing against Mono Red, that's another matchup that it can get some work done in. Be strong. Um. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can get Tithe back with the Johnny, but I am wanting to ultimate this a Johnny.
I don't know how many of these, like, how do I want to attack with these 3 threes? Hey, two nails. Attack with one and have two creatures back for a Johnny. Or attack with two and just have Lyra back. I'll attack with the two. So even if they use a removal spell on Lyra, and can attack a Johnny so that a Johnny does an ultimate, they're still at one. So all right, Sultai cards. So Sultai control deck. Um, This looks pretty reasonable. I could play more bindings, but I don't need to. Binding may not be very good in this matchup. Um, also, maybe just take out binding. Binding is good against Krasis, because uh, then even if they destroy the binding, then like the yeah, like binding is really good against Krasis. I guess I'll play it. I'm kind of assuming our opponent is a Vraska and Vivian deck though. And Vraska and Vivian are not really cards that I want to be binding. Well, check that. Those are cards I want to be binding, but I don't want to be binding other stuff. And then they play like Vraska or Vivian and just destroy my binding. Tight Taker and Takali in this match it reminds me of something from today. One player called me and asked to deck check from his opponent because he thought his opponent had cyborg against him on game one of the first match. Turns out his opponent was just playing hate bears. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Like those are those are certainly um, main deckable cards. Thoughtsies bug always works. Yeah, that was just... Yeah, so what Yud was saying is they... Um, the person thought their opponent was cheating them. I'm not judging. I was I was reading Yud's comment. Yud did some judging. Uh, so, question is, why do I choose a Danto Vanguard and Tithe Taker instead of the Explore package? Um, so, I like Resplendent Angel and History Banalia, and like those are. Um, it's hard to have those cards and the Explore package as well. You have to, you know, like I don't. I like both of those cards kind of over Jade Light here in this deck. Um, That's that's Meet the problem. Like my to to make like Wild Growth Walker or Branch Walker really good, you really need uh, Jade Light Ranger. Um, and then it also makes the man a lot harder because then if you want to have like green green consistently on turn three, it's kind of hard to have that and white white consistently on turn three. You know, it, it's kind of like you have to pick one or the other going like white white heavy, beginning. so you can have that consistently or green green heavy.
All right, Carnage Siren, you can do this. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're focused on the, the white, uh, heavy part in this deck, especially because of Res Resplendent Angel. Just playing this Tithe Taker first because it makes my opponent spend an extra mana <laughs> on their stuff. I don't know if that's going to really do a whole lot, but at least they'll have to spend um, an extra mana there. There you go. Good job, Jelly. Alright, we got uh, got the match. Carnage Tyrant takes it down. We have defeated the final boss, and that is a nice 5-1. Hey, thanks, Jelly. Thanks for the bits there. Congratulating on the five wins. A five-win dream happened. Our first three wins were pretty easy. Um... You know, didn't do a whole lot for the... We had two basically free wins. Um, beat a mono red player. Uh, yeah, two free wins. Beat mono red. Um, and we beat... What? A Bant... A uh, Bant deck. And then that uh, Sultai deck as well. Um, so, Yeah. Our, our deck felt pretty good. Um, I guess maybe... So, you know, the the, the part of the deck that... Uh, were, that was, you know, saying that... People were saying that maybe we need to have some more of our, like, baffling ends. And here are some two-mana removal. Which I could certainly see that. I'm not sure if three Knight of Autumns are necessary, especially with, like, all these Ixalan's bindings, or even if four Ixalan bindings are necessary. Those are two things that I'm not sure are really necessary. I think I think two baffling ends would be good to have in the the sideboard here over one binding over one knight of autumn. I think I'm gonna make that change for the next time I play the deck. I like that. Okay, so there we go. There's Selesnya Angels. So if you're watching this later on on YouTube, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next deck.